Welcome to worship at Memorial United Methodist Church in Gladstone, Michigan. I'm Pastor Kathy Rafferty, and I am glad that you and I and God are gathered here together to worship on Ascension Sunday. As we continue to worship together online, Memorial Church is enthusiastically open to proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ. Please connect with us on our website or Facebook or send us your email and we'll do our best to keep you up to date with what's happening. Check on our website now and you'll see some videos of the ministries we were engaged with this week. And you can see our contact information at the end and we do still check our mailbox and answer the telephone if you want to reach us that way. Now, if you've been following along, you may recall we've been journeying through the season of Easter. On Easter Sunday, we proclaimed, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. And we'll do it one more time today as we come to the end of the Easter season this year. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. On this last Sunday of the Easter season, we're celebrating the ascension of the risen Christ, the resurrected Jesus rising up to heaven after his last appearance to the disciples. We'll hear a little traffic this morning. We'll hear an account of the ascension of Jesus from the book of Acts in just a bit. We are also celebrating, you see there behind me, the high school graduations of four remarkable young women who are a part of our church family. And we'll see their photos and offer some prayers in just a little bit. Next Sunday, on May 31st, we're going to celebrate Pentecost. I'm looking here at the light. Okay. This is what you get when we're outside, a little, a little tech tech considerations. That's a little better. Okay, so next Sunday on May 31st, we're going to celebrate Pentecost with a video worship experience like we have been doing. And then on the first Sunday in June, June 7th, we'll celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion during worship. We may be ready to live stream from our sanctuary by then, perhaps with a few folks present. We'll also be looking at having worship outside. As you can see, the weather is getting much better, warming up and sunshine today. Even as we begin gathering in person, we recognize that for many of you, that will not be a healthy option. And so we're going to keep offering online access to our worship, and just as we have been. So please keep watch for the details. Now, we're going to walk a little bit here. This week is, let me, all right, there we go. This week is also Memorial Day weekend. And so we're going to get started over by the gazebo in our memorial garden. And I would invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer as we make our way over there. This is the gazebo in our memorial garden. I'm going to share an opening prayer. And then as we continue to take a little walk around the gazebo and memorial garden, I invite you to continue to be in prayer for those we remember, and those whose ashes are interred in this place and those we remember in our hearts as well as for those who gave their lives in the military for their country and for all of those in harm's way today. Will you join with me in prayer? Risen Christ, in these days of uncertainty and change, we walk as your disciples. In our worship of you, may we recognize you present among us. May we glimpse your true glory and hear your steady call to proclaim your love with our words and our actions until your kingdom comes. Amen.
A reading from Revelation, chapter 22, verse 1 through 7. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And night shall be no more. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits, of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed my sins away, oh happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away oh happy day he taught me how to watch and pray watch and pray every hour every day every day oh happy day oh happy day when jesus washed when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed my sins away, oh happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away, oh happy day. He gave me eyes that I might see, I might see. He gave me life, that I might be, I might be. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed my sins away, oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After this suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. 
While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A pastor was preaching on going to heaven. And she said, how many of you would like to go to heaven tonight? Well, everybody raised their hand, except one little child up in the balcony. And the preacher tried again. I'm asking now, I want to know how many of you want to go to heaven tonight? Everybody raised their hand, except that one little child in the balcony. The preacher gazed up at that child and asked, Child, don't you want to go to heaven? Well, the child replied, Sure, someday. But I thought maybe you were getting up a group to go right now. Quite often when conversation turns to things of heaven, we turn to passages like the one we heard from Kathy from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. These images have saturated Christian hymns and sermons and theology down through the centuries. These images have seeped into popular culture, into songs and films and even jokes. For many of us, these images have soaked into our hearts, into our minds, the throne of God, the Lamb of God, the river of life flowing into the crystal sea, the holy city with streets of gold and pearly gates, the tree of life with its healing leaves. Let's take a minute and focus on our image of heaven. What do you see? What do you hear? Who else is there? What does it smell like? How does it feel? Hold on to that. Now let's go on to our second reading. From the beginning of the book of Acts, we have a story that tells of Jesus' ascension into heaven. It was after his crucifixion, after the resurrection. Last Thursday was Ascension Day in the Christian church calendar, the 40th day after Easter. On Ascension Day, we remember the resurrected Jesus taken up into heaven in his resurrected body. Jesus' humanity returning to God, completing the time of Jesus' physical, bodily presence among his disciples. We also remember Jesus' promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit to come, the gift that we celebrate on the 50th day after Easter, the day of Pentecost, which is next Sunday. Now, I realize this may all sound pretty cut and dry, but there's an awful lot of holy mystery in all of this. These are just the words, and the images, and the milestones that Christians have come up with to talk about what happened through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, to mark and to remember those events as we journey each year through our liturgical calendar in worship. It's the language that we have for who God is with us. So as we move from Easter resurrection through ascension toward Pentecost, today we've heard from the book of Acts that the risen Jesus is in heaven. And in the book of Revelation, we're given a glimpse 
of what heaven might look like. Yet there does seem to be some distance between Jesus' arrival and our own. Maybe about six feet, depending on how you think about it. In the book of Acts, the disciples know that they have witnessed incredible things. Following the crucifixion and resurrection, the risen Jesus has continued with them for 40 days speaking to them about the kingdom of God, promising them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now, as the risen Christ gathers once more with his disciples, they want to know, is it time yet? Is this it? And they ask Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? It's the question that they've been asking since they first dropped their nets to follow him. It's the question that the ancient people of Israel had been asking ever since their kingdom fell apart centuries earlier, following the rule and the death of that favored son, King David. Yet, we can almost hear their question like a typical children would be asking on a long car trip. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Have the children of God finally arrived at the promised destination? And Jesus offers this oft-quoted cryptic reply. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. I wonder how that would work with the kids in the back seat next time we're on a long car trip. Instead of answering their persistent question of reaching their destination, Jesus tells the disciples, you've got your own work to do. You've got the work that I've called you to, to concern yourselves with. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now once I was attending a kayaking symposium, kind of a weekend of taking some courses and learning how to be a better kayaker. One of the instructors who was organizing an evening paddle around the lake we were at was working at dividing us up into two groups. She said, in every group, there are destination people and there are journey people. The destination people, they are focused on getting from point A to point B. They're, fit, they're focused on finishing the task before them reaching the goal. The journey people, they're more interested in what lies between point A and point B. They're concerned with the process of making their way from point A to point B. They're not as interested in meeting a goal, reaching the end. The disciples who are asking the question in today's reading, they sound like destination people. Are we there yet? While well, Jesus' answer speaks more to the journey that lies ahead for those who would follow his way. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And in today's reading, that is the last we hear from Jesus. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from sight. And they were gazing up toward heaven. Have you ever watched someone go to a place that you can't go yet? I remember as a young girl, before I was in school, I used to watch my dad leave for work. 
He'd be dressed in his shirt and tie, heading out the door, pausing at the kitchen table to give me a kiss goodbye and tell me, you be good now. I'd watch him go out the back door and then I'd run around to the kitchen and the dining room, into the living room, to the front of the house to watch out the windows as he drove away. I knew that he was going to work to the savings and loan, but I had no idea what that really meant. What sort of place it was, who else might be there. I'd just stand there at the window, gazing after him, trying to imagine what it must be like. And later in the day, I'd be back in the living room at the front window, watching down the road for Dad's car to come over the hill and turn in our driveway. Even though I wasn't exactly sure what kind of place he'd gone to, I knew he always came back. Now, I remember one day when I'd gone to town with Mom, we stopped in at the Savings and Loan where my dad worked. He showed me the teller's window where he stood most of the day. He showed me the little drawer with the money and the adding machine next to it. I guess that dates me a little bit. And then he showed me the vault, and I asked to see my money. I had a savings book where we wrote the deposits of my Christmas and birthday money. And I was looking for those particular silver dollars that I remember Dad taking to the bank that we'd written about in that little book. And Dad tried to explain to me that my specific money wasn't there in quite the way that I expected it to be. And I didn't really understand. Banking was a little bit beyond my preschool comprehension. I'd had a glimpse that day of where my dad worked. I could better imagine him being at work. I'd met some people who worked with him, but I wasn't ready by any stretch of the imagination to go along every day to work there with him. And after that day, I still watched for my dad's comings and goings, but usually Throughout most of my days, I was much more focused on my work of being a child, of learning and growing and playing. I think it's a good thing that we get a glimpse of heaven in the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation. And I think it's good that we sometimes take a bit of time to gaze up toward heaven to imagine what it might be like. I think it's also important that while we remember that we are ultimately citizens of heaven, today, right now, we are still here on earth. And God has given us work to do and the power to do it. There is a destination but for now, we are called to be journey people. For now, our work is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, to witness to God's grace and love and power working through each of our lives right here, right now. Like the little child in the joke, we may all someday want to get to heaven, but for now, May just the glimpse we have from God's holy word be enough to encourage us on our work here on earth. Enough to sustain us, to energize us, to fill us with grace and love and joy until we are called to go. Thanks be to God. Now, on this Memorial Day weekend Sunday, I invite you to listen, and if you want to sing along at home, go right ahead. This is a great one to belt out at home. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. If you have a hymnal, it's number 717. And we also have the words on our at-home worship guide, if you want to grab that.
our weekly offering is one way in which we respond to God's word in worship. And I'm encouraged that so many of you have continued to give faithfully through these uncertain times. I'm grateful for your commitment to proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ through the ministries of Memorial Church here in Gladstone. It's my hope and my prayer that each one of you will find ways to give of yourselves in this week ahead. You can give financially to Memorial United Methodist Church on our website. There's a place to contribute or you can send us a check through the U.S. mail. You can see our contact information at the end of the service. And we praise and thank God for each way in which you offer yourselves to the glory of God. And we give thanks for the ways that God takes what we offer and turns it into that love and that grace, that healing and that hope in our hurting world. Each week we also share our prayers together, our joys and our concerns. We have our prayer requests that we used to write on cards and now we get them through email and phone calls and however else you want to contact us. And you can find our prayer list on the website. It comes in the email to those for whom we have email addresses every week as well and updates along the way. Our prayer list, as I mentioned, is posted on our website, and I trust that you will hold those who are listed there in your prayers every day of every week. And I do want to encourage you to continue contacting us with your prayer requests. We do take them seriously and pray for them. For today, let's take a quiet moment to offer those prayers that are on our hearts, in our minds knowing that we pray together as the body of Christ. Today I'd like us to take time to Pray for each one of our graduating high school seniors, Andy and Grace and Amy and Allie. Perhaps you'd like to add your prayers and congratulations to our graduates in the Facebook or YouTube comments. And we're also going to bless these handmade quilts from our quilting group that will be a part of our gift from Memorial Church to our graduating seniors. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our graduating seniors, for Andy and for Amy, for Allie and for Grace, and for all who are graduating anywhere. We pray for their present and for their future, asking your blessings on their journey. We give you thanks for parents and families, teachers, classes, and schools, for all who have nurtured and raised up this class of 2020. We give you thanks for these four graduates whose lives are woven together with Memorial Church and for the ways in which we have journeyed together to this moment. And now we ask your blessing on these quilts, that they might be a reminder of our love and care, our hope and encouragement for each graduate. May they feel your love as well, wrapped around them in days to come, wherever their journey takes them. Amen. Now with you, will you please continue in prayer with me in the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thanks for watching and worshiping with us. I hope you'll check back again, and until then, as we conclude this time together, I'll leave you with this Ascension Sunday blessing. Having worshipped in the presence of the risen Christ, with a glimpse of the glory to come, may you now turn your eyes to the work ahead, witnessing to the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit in all you say and do. Amen. Thank you.